What's up, Wolfpack fam? It's your boy, Kid, back at it again. Hope you're doing well. We're going to be continuing our journey of the Thin Blue Line. This is going to be episode four. This is your cue right now. Get up, go get your snacks, get a nice cold drink, whatever you want. You know, get some tea, get some, you know, coffee, you know, soda, whatever, beer, whatever, and, and go get it because we got an episode to watch right now. Let's get it. Snacks not included. Episode four starts right now. Let's get it, boys and girls. Good evening, everybody. Sometimes one does despair of today's youth. To them, concepts such as honor, duty, and self-restraint are as foreign as a Frenchman and no more acceptable. <laughs> On the other hand, of course, it is important not to judge people too harshly. We were all young once, and although we may not have attended raves, <laughs> I seem to remember that Saturday morning at the pictures could get pretty wild. Yeah. He who has never chucked a gobstopper at John Wayne during the kissy bit <laughs> cast the first stone. <laughs> For young people, as we shall see, are like the last banana in the fruit bowl. Not all. I'd be glad when they fixed up our showers and toilet. I hate sharing the blokes. There's a pair of jocks in that locker that's developing its own ecosystem. <laughs> it's not what you need when you're feeling delicate. Had a little drinky last night, did we? Just a bit. My tongue's got so much fur on it, I may need a license to keep it domestically. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking like that's terribly bad for you, you know, Maggie. Really, Pat? And there was me thinking that having a brain like a pickled walnut and a mouth like a rat's bum was a bit of a health cure. <laughs> Instead of poisoning your body, you should be concentrating on rejuvenating your physical and sensual sides. Uh, the way I feel this morning, you couldn't rejuvenate my sensual side if you chucked me into a bath full of Chippendales and asked me to find the soap. <laughs> oh, God. Blimey! Sharing the gents with a load of women, it's a disgrace! The place will stink like the perfume counter of Boots. <laughs> They'll be in there. Dibby, dabby, lippy, lappy, powder puffing, barnet puffing, squirty, squirty. Only be a minute, I've just got to regrout me crow's feet. <laughs> I've got all this at home, you know. I'm uh. talking about alternative healing, Maggie. I've just joined a well woman group. You can do. Rebirthing, reflexology, shiatsu massage. You have to let it all out. Please, Pat. I'm having enough trouble keeping it all down. <laughs> and if you haven't got time for shiatsu, just have an enema. You can do it at home in five minutes with an ordinary garden hose. <laughs> Tweezering and plucking and <laughs> using my bick on her legs. And slapping the glandular oils of some dead whale around like it didn't cost 15 quid a jar, which I have to bleed in her. Well, I'm off the booze now anyway. My little sister's coming to stay. Oh, that's nice. No, it's not. She's completely boring. Good at flipping two shoes. If she sees me with so much as a half of Cydrax, she'll tell me, Mum, who'll immediately ring up in floods and read the entire Quran onto my answer phone. <laughs> Perhaps your sister would like to come along to my rebirthing group. You recreate the moment you emerged from your mother's womb. Oh, I'll see if I can persuade her. Maybe she'll come out a bit more interesting second time around. <laughs> I shall come on, Tina. Again. She says I'm just going to have five minutes on the bum wobbling machine. Then she leaves the top of the toothpaste. Blimey, Fowler, I thought at least at work we could keep the birds out of the bog. <laughs> Sharing lockers is brilliant. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm actually going to be changing in the same room as Constable Habib. But not at the same time. <laughs> True, <laughs> but it's a step in the right direction, isn't it? <laughs> right, that's it, you lot. Come on, time's up. Get out of it! Good morning, Inspector Grimm. Oh, it's still morning, is it? Blimey, I thought it was late. <laughs> Evening at least, or else sometime next year. And doesn't time 
lie when you're hanging around outside the bog waiting for a bunch of women to stop funnying about. <laughs> ah, you do get yourself worked up, don't you, Inspector? He does. You really should try and diffuse your tension. Have you thought about irrigating your colon? <laughs> Not really. I don't do a lot of gardening. Inspector <laughs> <laughs> Grimm, it is 8.51 and 42 seconds. With respect, if you consult your rota, I think you'll find that mail time begins at 8.52. I told you, Fowler, women all the same, totally, toiletarily territorial. <laughs> Inspector Grimm, we don't like this situation any more than you do, and with better reason. What better reason? Lots of better reasons. Name a better reason. Well, we've been properly toilet trained for a start. Yes. <laughs> you lot seem to think you're supposed to stand on the bog and aim outwards. <laughs> drips. Women are obsessed with drips. <laughs> I say, Tina, wear a pair of slippers. <laughs> please. Rich. Really, now. Please, please. Now, now. Yeah. Now, please. <laughs> Rich. The situation is as it is, and we must simply make the best of it. I've scheduled a meeting with the regional auditor, but he is notoriously tighter than an Italian tenor's trouser buttons, <laughs> so I hold out little hope for extra funds this financial year. Clearly, I cannot take money from our crime-fighting activities. Why? We never solve any burglaries. Why don't we investigate half as many, sir? We'd cut our failure rate by 50% and afford new toilets into the bargain. Such cynicism is depressing in one so young, Abby. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for my morning movement. <laughs> Look what I've got, Frank. Some of that new male Calvin Klein perfume. Dead cool, dead street. <laughs> Really gets the babes horny. <laughs> you know, I reckon when Constable Habib gets a whiff of this, she'll say, well, hey, climb aboard, big boy, and fall at my feet. <laughs> wow. Kevin, it'll take more than a whiff of perfume to make Maggie Habib fall at your feet. Maybe you should try chloroform, eh? <laughs> <laughs> It's supposed to be evocative of a man's testicles. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. What is it that blokes have that makes them sexy? Mm, sunglasses? <laughs> no, it's close to testicles, only a little bit longer. <laughs> Testosterone, Kevin. Look at it, wrapped in a towel. <laughs> Give us a splash. I've got lager seeping out of my pores. In the boozer till two. Sixteen cans of special brew and nothing to eat but peanuts. <laughs> I could have pebble dashed the pub. <laughs> two? Well, that's way past closing time. Closing times for plebs, not us. The lock-in is a traditional copper's perk. It's like sticking your siren on when you're late for dinner. We're having another lock-in on Friday. How about coming out? Uh, you be careful, son. Once when I was starting off as a constable, I got drinking with some other silly young coppers when suddenly in walked our chief inspector. I looked at my watch. It was one o'clock. Quick as a flash, I put a pork pie on my head and pretended to be a table. <laughs> And what did the inspector do? He ordered a pint. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> you see, Kev, no problem. There's a big illegal late night drink this Friday. Lots of the boys are coming out. You've got to come out too. Yes, well, I don't know about that, Gary. As a policeman, I just don't feel comfortable breaking the law. I mean, I know that sounds stupid, Look, but I... mate, <laughs> coppers stick together. <laughs> oh, shit. And if we have to bend the rules, then we do it together. That's the police culture. And you'll do a lot better on the force if you admit you're one of us from the start. So you come out, all right? I'm out on Friday. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, Patricia, uh, regarding the current dysfunctional nature of the non-male person's locker room, the ladies lose, yes. You blew it up? Well, <coughs> I wonder if you could inform your compatriots of the female variety that I am, of course, arranging for the ladies some, um, you know, the ladies some um, machine <laughs> to be moved. 
The what? <laughs> the lady's machine. You know, the, um, the mechanised purveyor of um, <laughs> purificatory dressings. <laughs> <laughs> of great swabs. Sanitationary uh, compresses, <laughs> applications, uh, internal and external, <laughs> ladies for the use of, as and when required, <laughs> traditionally <coughs> on a monthly basis. Raymond, there's nothing embarrassing about Tam. No, 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 what an idea, blimey, embarrassed. <laughs> I talk about them all the time. <laughs> Really, not do. talking about them get quite boring on the subject, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, oh. Anyway, the, um, well, the, um, thingy machine will, will be relocated in the mail locker room in a suitably discreet darkened corner. <laughs> Unless, of course, you'd rather we put it in the cellar, you know, to save embarrassment. No, the locker room will be fine. Oh, good, good. So in the broom cupboard behind the cistern it goes, then. <laughs> Tampon. The vile scourge of drugs has arrived in Gasford. Some people won't admit it, but I, for one, am not going to bury my head in an ostrich. <laughs> Kids are already taking E, openly, in clubs, and that is only the thin end of the bush. <laughs> Today, it's E. Next week, it might be F. G? Possibly even G. Oh, don't look at that. Now then, tomorrow night, there is going to be a rave at the old gasworks. CID officers, led by Detective Inspector Derek Grimm, in the person of myself, for that is me, <laughs> will be in attendance and also... It is where we will be. <laughs> that is all. Further information as and if and when and as and if required. Confuse me. Drugs. Drugs. <laughs> what is wrong with young people today? With their uppers, downers, poppers, toppers, <laughs> speed, whiz, crack, junk. Smack, splosh, zing, bonk, bar, oink, wang, bam. Oops, I've just destroyed the family brain cell. Can't they amuse themselves without chemical stimulation? Haven't they heard of Monopoly? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they're just not as boring. I mean, as sensible as you were, sir. They're looking for something more exciting. Exciting? Have you ever had hotels on Mayfair and Park Lane? <laughs> You can make a fortune. A damn sight more exciting than filling your head with chemicals and prancing about drinking Lucasaid for eight hours. I can see nothing exciting about that whatsoever. Well, that's not quite true. I do recall that as a youngster, I could get pretty worked up at the prospect of a glass of Lucasaid. But great plates of wobbly custard. Why this need for sensory stimulants? When I was an adolescent, my idea of a major sensory stimulant was sucking on a fisherman's friend. <laughs> and I said something amusing, Constable Goody. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, yes, sir, definitely. <laughs> really? Then perhaps you'd like to explain the joke to me. Yes, I will. Well, sir, yes. you said that you were stimulated by sucking on a fisherman's friend. <laughs> And I think that's very funny. <laughs> I see. And why do you find it funny, Constable Goody? Well, they're horrible, aren't they? Everyone knows that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to clean up this town, Boyle. Drugs are the effluence of society. And I'm the toilet duck. <laughs> I'll show these... Bloody kids, when Grim of Gasforth puts his backside on the line, they can't just stick two fingers up. <laughs> yeah. 
If kids want to destroy their bodies, why don't they drink ten pints of lager like sensible adults? What's wrong with being bored, anyway? The rest of us have to sit at home in front of the telly. Why shouldn't they? I can tell you what, sir. Me and some of the lads have organised a lock-in after tomorrow night's raid. Why don't you get in on it? Well, I don't know, Boyle. I don't normally do that sort of thing. Oh, come on, sir. You spend all evening chasing drug addicts and you can't even have a little drinky at the end of it. That can't be right now, can it, eh? <laughs> Calvin Klein. Just giving you a whiff of my testosterone. <laughs> I shall speak to your mother. Oh, Maggie, 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 Maggie. Can I talk to you about something? It's just that I've got a sort of moral dilemma. You see, Gary Boyle has been going on at me about coming out. He wants you to come out? Yes. He wants me to come out and admit that I'm one of them. <laughs> What's it got to do with him? Tell him to bog off. No, no, no. You see, in so many ways, I feel that I'd actually quite like to, you know. But it isn't easy, what with being a policeman and everything. Oh, I see. Mm. Well, whatever you decide to do, Kevin, I want you to know I think you've been really brave. And I really admire you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This perfume is sex dynamite. <laughs> I'm going to dunk my trousers in it. <laughs> Do you want a splash? Listen, son. A woman likes to smell a man as nature intended. Sweat, Guinness, and pickled onions. <laughs> you can't bottle that. <laughs> I'm off for my rebirthing. Ah, yes, rebirthing. Just remember to pick me up at ten. Patricia, I'm hardly likely to leave a newborn baby to fend for itself in the sports centre car park, now am I? There's one reborn every minute. You don't He's think happy. much of Sergeant Dawkins' interest in alternative inner healing, do you, sir? But why is everybody searching for this something inside them? Patricia and her quest for the inner woman? Children and their drugs? It's an alternative culture now, sir. People are asking questions. They want to know who they are. Then they should damn well look at their passports. <laughs> alternative culture. <laughs> I remember when our idea of alternative culture was turning over to ITV. <laughs> People have too much choice these days. Did you know that you can get an almond Mars bar? <laughs> an almond Mars bar? Mars bars got by for over 50 years without almonds in them. Yes, sir. Edgy. Caramel in the whispers. <laughs> we live in a debauched, hedonistic age. Young people are addicted to pleasure. Not all young people, sir. My little sister's addicted to organised religion, exams and netball. Mm. She sounds like a very fine young woman. Proof that not all young people are decadent wastrels. Oh, Maggie. A young lady for you says she's your sister. Hello, Maggie. Hello, Nazia. This is my little sister, Nazia, sir. Ah, splendid. Splendid. Welcome to Gasforth, Nazia. I'm sure you'll love it. We have a museum, a small library, and a fascinating 18th century stone horse trough. <laughs> Stuff that. As soon as I got my glad rags on, I'm out raving. You better change if you want to come too, Mags. Look like a right toss pot in that pig's costume. Damn! <laughs> I brought you your milk. Can you not be too long learning to walk because I'm parked on a metre? Thank you, Raymond. I'm only five seconds old and already my innocence has gone. <laughs> Creepy. Make yourself at home, why don't you? All right, if I smoke? Well, you haven't started smoking cigarettes, have you? Just grass. Nazia, <laughs> go and flush that down the toilet right now. You realise it's actually my duty to arrest you. Go on, then. Or at least tell Mum. You wouldn't. Just get rid of it now. 
<laughs> One minute late. Very sorry, Maggie. That's all right, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin! Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to pry. Yes. But I was wondering whether you thought any more about your coming out. Well, yes, I have. Lots. But it's very confusing, you know. Sometimes I swing one way, sometimes the other. <laughs> oh, I see. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Morning, doll. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was up all night at a lock-in, had to shower off. Lovely. Very refreshing. Hey, I found some lovely scented soap in there. Peach shampoo and sea fresh deodorant. I like having birds in our bogs. Oh, I could shag myself. <laughs> Freak. Don't forget I've got my reflexology this evening, Raymond. Ah, yes. Reflexology. Which one's that again? It's a terrific shortcut to all body well-being. Every part of you is represented on the sole of the foot, so any pain or uptightness can be alleviated by firmly massaging the foot. So here is the liver and the colon and the buttocks. And, uh, then where is the foot? <laughs> yeah. Um, Looks like a well, foot. I, I mean, supposing I, I had a really sore foot. <laughs> how would you how would you soothe my foot? <laughs> By grabbing my foot and sticking your thumbs into my foot? Raymond, do I ask you to logically justify your covering the kitchen table with a balsa wood model of a Lancaster bomber? No, but I'd be quite happy to. <laughs> Constable Boyle, for the final time, if you're going to use my soap, could you please remove your hairs from it once you've finished? Oh. Don't be so squeamish. It's just benign, non-volatile dead cell matter. It is benign, non-volatile dead cell matter that grew out of your scrotum. Uh. And I hate it. How do you do it? I could have stuffed a mattress by now. Each day I gouge a small toupee off the soap. And the next day's back, looking like a member of the Grateful Dead. Damn. Inspector Fowler, I would like to lodge a formal protest against having to share a locker room with a gruesome fallout from Constable Boyle's rapidly balding bodily parts. The situation really is most intolerable. But unless I can get some extra cash out of the regional auditor, a man who does not recognize the verb to spend, then I'm afraid we're all stuck in the same lavatory till Christmas. Wow. <laughs> no fannying about. And above all, no fannying about. <laughs> we assemble at 0, 11.30, 100 hours, p.m. <laughs> in the evening. Okay. That is all. Let's go, go, go. Got it. Big raid, this. Quite exciting. Well, we get some dealers, not just silly kids. Do you fancy a bit of chewing gum to calm your nerves? <laughs> it's a new brand, fresh and easy. Got it out of the machine in the locker room. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you a great, fresh feel all day. <laughs> Helps you get on with life. And no leaking. Which is great, isn't it? Because I often dribble a bit if I try and chew and watch television at the same time. Oh, yes. Good sick and sponge bag, you imbecile boy. Which way are you going? Sorry, I'm so sorry. Sir, with respect, I think you should be a bit more understanding with Kevin. Oh, shit. He's a bit distracted, you see. The thing is, he's told me that he's coming out. <laughs> coming out? Do you mean coming out as a Guardian reader would understand the term? <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Oh, I see. Well, I must go out of my way to put him at his ease. <coughs> now then, Goody. Um, I've asked you to come and see me on a matter about which I feel no embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> no Where embarrassment is... whatsoever. Mm. <laughs> um, Constable Habib has informed me that you're worried about... about, um... coming out. Well. 
<laughs> I suppose it has been on my mind, sir, yes. Well, you mustn't worry yourself unduly, good. That's good, sir, because Gary Boyle says that having a sly quickie after work is a police tradition. <laughs> he said that? Oh, yes. <laughs> he says that if a bloke can't get a couple of stiff ones down his neck after work, then what's the point of being a copper? He reckons that the pub lock-in is all part of police culture. Pub lock-in? <laughs> you mean you've been asked to come out for an illegal drink? That's what's been worrying you? Yes, see, I do do it all the time. I'm really pleased it doesn't bother you. I'll tell you what, I'll be stuck into the Malibu at the Frock and Truncheon tonight. <laughs> if you do, you appalling youth, you'll be stuck in a cell tomorrow morning. I'm aware that there are certain nod-and-a-wink customs in which CID officers ignore the law, but I will not allow the corruption of my officers. Quite frankly, I preferred you when you were a homosexual. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Bang him up, boy, or bang him in the hole. Oh, all right. I want urine from all this lot. Would somebody kindly take the urine? <laughs> Check their eyeballs. If the pupils are dislocated, nick them. Look for the signs of addiction. A distant stare, regular truancy, loss of appetite at mealtimes. Boil to me! Hear the dramatic music change. Society. The rest of you with me. Let's go, go, go. Well, go, go. Oh, oh, no. No. This episode is real. you so I was protecting my sister you understand that I'm going to have to charge you yes sir you fool constable what madness possessed you she's my little sister sir my mum would have died she'd be go to your desk constable making me sad man Derek. Constable Habib is by far and away my best officer. She already represents a public investment of many thousands of pounds. What are you suggesting, Inspector Fowler? I am suggesting that we do not charge her. She has a fine career ahead of her, and because of one insane moment of filial loyalty... I don't believe I'm hearing this. Inspector High and Mighty Snooty Snotty Itty Tighty Fowler wants me to break the law. I know! I know. But she was just trying to help her little sister. And when her little sister is a drug baron defending an armoured crack house with a shoulder held missile launcher, <laughs> will it be all right to help her then? No. Matic. I don't like it. But I know my duty. We're charging her. It's been a long night. Right, Boyle, what about that drink we were discussing? Well, <laughs> thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome, Boyle. We can settle up later. 
<laughs> I reckon this raid might mean promotion for you, sir. Well, I can't deny I am rather expecting a call from a grateful chief constable. Ah, I can't see anything going wrong with that. Hey, unless we get raided. <laughs> all right, you all. You're all under arrest. Out through the box, sir. All coppers trip. <laughs> The problem with old copper's tricks, Constable Boyle, is that old coppers know them. Don't do me for this, Fowler. I've never done anything like it before. A conviction would ruin my career. Never mind, Inspector Grimm. It was never a very promising one. <laughs> Unlike Constable Habib's. You can't compare withholding evidence of drugs with a friendly little book in. Really? I think you'll find that I can. <laughs> also, I think you'll find that the Promotions Board will be inclined to view any criminal conviction as something of a blot on a policeman's record. All right. I won't charge Happy. In that case, I won't charge you or Boyle. I've got a couple of outstanding parking tickets, sir. <laughs> you think you can get me off those? Fair enough. I'm terribly sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Glockenspiel, but I've just been assembling the relevant financial reports regarding the ladies' locker room. No rush. You won't get a penny out of me anyway. <laughs> I took the liberty of making myself a mug of Bovril whilst I was waiting. Your very good health. Bovril? Yes. <laughs> My favourite beverage. Nutritious and, above all, cheap. <laughs> I saw that cube on your desk. <laughs> so I made free with your kettle. No, oh, don't worry, I've left you half. <laughs> He's gonna be hype. Quick, get a requisition slip. Mr. Glockenspiel says we can have as many lavatories as we like. <laughs> in fact, he's offered to put in jacuzzis in a steam room. <laughs> also, he's asked for kebabs, pizzas, and 15 king size Mars bars. No almonds. <laughs> right then, Henry, let's talk toilets. <laughs> About some whisper gold, boys and girls. A little caramel action here. Hold on, it's back up here. I mean, not back up. All right, all right, all right, boys and girls. All right, we're gonna go full screen, pretty much. Give me a second. Uh, yeah, and we'll go chit chat about another spectacular episode. Uh, man, so happy I'm watching this show. Woo! Every time I watch this show. And every time we watch another episode, man, we are just left feeling so damn good. So, uh, you know, power of a good show. A lot of crazy, uh, interesting things have happened on this episode. Um, from everyone, you know, from, uh, you know, Ms. Habib thinking <laughs> that Goody was having his coming out party, uh, you know. Yeah, when you use those those words and stuff like that, yeah, you know, the, your mind is automatically almost thinking someone is trying to come out or something like that. So yeah, you're not, you're definitely not thinking that this guy is talking about, uh, some, some, you know, going out with the boys thing, you know, the legal shit. So, uh, definitely a funny episode off that. So I want to say this about, uh, uh, Mr. Goody that when he was doing that little thing like that, this is like, man, this is like every Axe commercial and shit. Like, you know, you're trying to get the girl and she sniffs and then she starts chasing him and shit. So, uh, you know, definitely funny moments there, you know, with Goody. I mean, this this guy just, you know, just doesn't fail to, uh, you know, make you laugh. And, uh, you know, I think that everyone had a special role on this episode. Like, there really is no uh, bad characters on this show. I, w I will say... It's interesting. It's different. Anybody peeping this this crazy transformation with Patricia, man? This is this is throwing me for a loop, man. I, I'm used to seeing her, you know, uh, moody or angry, and you know, needs. He has a lot of built-in sexual frustration, so she has found this substitute. I, I admit, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I miss. The old Patricia. I mean, this new one. She's calm. She's mellow. When she was in that little pool. With all those people making all these weird sounds, it was like this bootleg, like it, it was like some National Geographic shit right there. Uh, a lot going on. It's like <laughs> so, uh, you know, very crazy episode, man. Very crazy episode. Uh, you know, 
when it just starts off in the beginning and you got the boys waiting online to use the, you know, the facilities and you got the girls talking very interesting, very funny dialogue with the girls. And then you just go, you know, extra, you know, once you start seeing Grimm and, and the rest of these dudes, Grimm just doesn't disappoint. Another, you know, fabulous performance by him. Um, the way he getting angry, uh, he's like squirty, squirty. You know, he just he just keeps going and going and going, uh, fanning about. You know, just fanning about. And the way he just gets so angry, it just it, it's so damn believable. You know, it's it's so good. So, um, yeah, like you know, it's it, it, he started off. You know, he, he make you laugh, but then he just continues. He continues to just uh take it to an extra you know an extra level. So, um. Got a blast on this episode. There's a lot of things going on there. You know, family or 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 or, or friends can put you into awkward situations. You know, very bad situations, very bad scenarios. You know, you got this uh, picture perfect cop. You know, and Miss Habib. You know, who was put into such an awkward, you know, uh, situation. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Um, that it's you know again it's going to be everybody's uh you know whatever your moral compass is or what you decide to do in a scenario that because you're put on the spot you know uh you know it'd be very interesting to see how you guys would have responded i mean I, i'll be honest man i probably would have done the same thing you know what i mean like uh family is very important uh, i mean i know that would have been bad you know what i'm saying and she could have she got you know i don't if she was going to get basically was she going to get written up or she was going to like get find like what like what was what was gonna happen i you know i i heard what he was saying but i just want to understand a little bit more so what would have been the consequence uh had they pursued they, she would have got prosecuted she would have got fined would she be like off the job for a bit I mean, please clarify that for me um i got no experience in law enforcement but uh if yeah if you got the the you know the 411 on that to help clarify that for me that would be great um yeah the the um Miss Abib's sister, she she looked like Cyril's wife from uh um you know uh, still open all hours, but yeah, I was younger. Uh, but you know, again, I, I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, she did look uh like Cyril's wife. Uh, you know, just much younger. So, um, but it's crazy because, you know, you have Miss Abib that she's here thinking that um, you know, her sister's gonna be you know like a you know uh. What's the word? Like a goody two shoes or something? Like, you know, they're, they're not risky and doing bad shit. And she flipped it and she was, and, and Miss B was the one that was uh, snitching her grass. She's like, I'm going to tell mom, you know, so uh, definitely funny. So we can definitely say this about Fowler when it comes to his crew. And this is a guy strictly done by the book, doesn't get no more, uh, you know, straight by the book than Fowler. He's had the he's had his teams back, man. When it really comes through in the clutch, again, you're putting Fowler now into a a, a very tough situation because you got this excellent, you know, uh, officer on, on your team. So it's like it's you have real moments there. You know, you 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 cued in when the, you you felt that the sister was gonna be there because she was gonna she wanted to go to raves and shit. Um, and you cue that they cue that you know that 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 uh, emotional music. You're like, oh shit, you you could just tell. Um, you know, yeah, you, you had my man Grim. He's like, we got these, we got these young kids on E F. My man was gonna go through the alphabet G H I J K L. You know, uh, freaking funny. I I liked when Fowler was talking, and he was like saying, yeah, you know, oh, I could get pretty rowdy off of some Monopoly. Have you ever tried to get, you know, uh, whatever place that he was talking about? Uh, yeah, Monopoly is the game that ruins friendships, boys and girls, man. That she gets, that, that she gets kind of rowdy, man. But, uh, just thinking about, you know, Fowler's, um, definition of, you know, uh, I guess being wild is, is just hilarious. I mean, you know, uh, it's again like there's been a couple episodes that you know have that realness to it. Uh, you know, when in this case, you know, it's revolving around kids and and and, and drugs and you know try, their alternate you know uh, stuff. And it, you see now like Patricia, she's finding her and since she's found her alternate to like sex for for the time being, she's found like uh, something that she's actually happy about. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think about this episode? 
There was a lot going on in this episode, a lot of crazy cool stuff going on. The Calvin Klein stuff was hilarious. Uh, just, you know, thinking about the Axe commercials, not, you know, but m way more funnier. Uh, you know, he's going like this and stuff. Uh, the conversations with Habib were great, uh, you know, especially when she was thinking he's trying to call coming out. He got a kiss, you know, maybe not the way he would have wanted to get kissed and, and not the, the way because... Uh, you know, he didn't know that he, she was thinking that he's going to come out and stuff like that. So a lot of twists, a lot of funny stuff. Um, roller coaster of an episode, uh, you know, grim, uh, you know, uh, just, yeah, when he's angry, man, he's just, it's so funny, man. So, uh, I could go on and on and on and on and on how good this episode is, but you know, it, number one thing is it made me laugh. The story's funny, uh. You know, the acting, all that stuff, it's written well, and we already know that stuff. Um, just having a good time. This is what comedy's about. Uh, you know, it really makes me appreciate the show. I'm very fortunate and, and blessed uh, that uh, we're watching this show. Uh, you guys put me on to some great shows, boys and girls, so, you know, you have my many thanks. So if you're enjoying the content, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, hit that notification bell, and, and we'll do our best to keep that content rolling. Thank you so, for spending your time here. I really appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Peace and love. Peace.